Spotlight is a production of CTNY, the Catholic television network of Youngstown. It seeks to spotlight people, places, and events from around the Diocese of Youngstown that promote the new gospel of joy called for by Pope Francis. Your program host is Father James Corda. Hello and welcome to Spotlight. I am Father Jim Corda. Joining me today is Pat Palumbo, and we're going to talk about leaving a legacy. Pat, welcome to our show today. It's great to be here, Father Corda. Thank you for having me. You know, uh, we know that uh, you are so involved with development of the di in the diocese and stewardship, and our topic basically today is going to be on leaving a legacy. You know, when we use that phrase, what exactly are we talking about? Well. Most people wish to make a mark in society or in our world during their lifetime. I think even young people, whether it be athletics, the arts or something, everyone wants to sort of make an impact and stand out somehow in their social realm. Well, when we talk about leave a legacy, we talk about making a mark or an impact even beyond your lifetime. You could actually leave a legacy that stands the test of time, extends well beyond your lifetime, perhaps a century or more, uh, by leaving a legacy. Now, that would take different forms, I would imagine, but probably one of the primary forms would be in the area of some kind of financial endowment. Is that correct? Exactly. So do you have to be, first of all, someone who is extremely wealthy to leave a legacy, or could you be just a hard-working individual who has some money set aside that you might want to leave it for some purpose? You know, I think the greatest fallacy uh, when we talk about leaving a legacy or being a philanthropist mm -hmm. is people believing that you have to be wealthy or ha have to be a person of means to do so. Uh, average people uh, like myself and others could certainly leave a legacy. Uh, it depends on how you want to do it and what level. What uh, would be some of the ways that people could actually begin to think in that area? You don't just wake up and say, well, I'm going to endow this university or I'm going to leave money for this cause. What's kind of the process that's involved in that and how does one go about that process? Well, specifically, when you're talking about endowment, you set up an endowment fund with a nonprofit organization, and of course the Catholic Diocese of Youngstown has a foundation. And in that foundation we house a number of endowment funds. You could actually establish your own endowment fund. The minimum amount necessary is $10,000. Again, not so insurmountable. We have a number of people who are looking to do this and are saving up over a period of years uh, to come up with the $10,000. But for $10,000, you could have an endowment fund. It could be in your family name, uh, a deceased loved one's name. Uh, some of our Catholic people have set up an endowment fund in the name of their late parents, who perhaps uh, were very fond of Catholic education. And so they'll set up the John and Mary Jones Catholic Endowment Fund. And for $10,000, they established the fund. An endowment fund is such that the corpus remains intact and only the accumulated income is used for the purpose for which the fund was established. So in that regard, it is a perpetual fund and lives well beyond the lifetime of those who set it up. I know that uh, for us here at CTNY, we have two endowments that are part of that, that fund. Obviously, uh, one is our um, Mary Catherine Livingston, which is for our Mass for Shut-In, uh, endowment and also our St. Clair endowment, which we've used over the years for a number of different projects and, um, and so forth. What are some of those other endowments that make up the diocesan one? And to give people an idea of what they could use their money for. Uh, Father Corda, we have funds in, in various categories. I, I already alluded to the fact that we have a number of Catholic education and Catholic school endowment funds. Some provide tuition assistance. Some provide specific financial aid to a particular school or a group of schools in a particular area of the diocese. Uh, we have funds in human services. Catholic Charities has a number of endowment funds that support the work they do in the diocese throughout the six counties. We have a number of funds that support priestly ministry. 
We have funds that support seminarians and provide income annually to help fund our seminarians' education in the various seminaries used by the diocese. We have some uh, funds that are set up just to support our diocesan cathedral, St. Columba Cathedral, and other similar causes. We have a very popular fund uh, that we've begun, we just begun giving grants from the uh, Reverend Philip Conley, a uh, lay ministry endowment fund, for example. And this helps support lay ministers who wish to further their education. So there's a whole variety. You, actually, one could be rather creative mm -hmm. and establish an endowment fund to support a particular cause in our church. We're down to the last few minutes of our first uh, segment together. Uh, what's all involved in creating a charitable gift uh, or endowment? Uh, does someone contact you or the diocese? How does that process begin? Typically they contact me as a director of development. And what we do is we have a standard endowment fund agreement. It's a two-page agreement that's pretty straightforward. And I share this with the party or the family, and uh, we go through it, and they uh, name the fund. They have the capacity to name the fund after whomever they want or however they want, after their family or whatever. And then they, we put in specifically what the particular cause will be that the fund will support throughout the decades. And uh, once we establish the language so that it's uh, agreeable, uh, then they sign three copies of this agreement, and Bishop Murray, as Bishop of the Diocese, he signs three copies. Everyone has a copy for themselves, and the fund is established. What uh, accountability is, uh, is part of that whole endowment um, process or fund? You know, people always want to know, is my money safe? Is it in vested in such a way that it's going to be in perpetual? What, what's th that whole uh, accountability? There are a number of layers uh, of accountability for the Diocese of Youngstown Foundation. First of all, there is a, a foundation board of directors that meets quarterly that looks at how the funds are being invested, etc. There are actually professional uh, fund managers that manage the funds on a daily basis. At the present time, our diocesan foundation has grown to be close to $45 million. And uh, it's grown very quickly in the last couple of years. And again, this particular group oversees that, and these investment managers do the daily investing. Likewise, we have a diocesan finance council that also oversees the fund from their perspective. And uh, using a lot of lay professionals and a lot of professionals around the diocese, we keep a pretty tight uh, cap on how things are managed and how they work. Also, one thing about our Diocese of Youngstown Foundation, uh, none of the funds are invested in a cause that might be contrary to the uh, uh, social justice or social issues uh, for which the church would stand. We're going to talk a little bit more specifically about all of that in a moment, but we're going to take a quick break. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. I am Marino. Yo soy Marino. Marino, an American Catholic organization of priests and brothers, has been reaching out to those in need for nearly 100 years in 26 countries throughout the world. Missioners, workers, volunteers, supporters, we are all Marino. I'm Father Mike, and I am Marino. 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 Hi, I'm Mark Quinn. As I grew up on the south side of Chicago, the Dominican Sisters of Springfield not only taught me, but formed me in my Catholic faith. The sisters worked for very, very little. Now as they've gotten older, they have no savings to fall back on. And we benefited from their sacrifice. And I think it's time that we recognize that much of what we are today, we are because of what sisters did for us. It's our turn to help them out in their hour of need. They don't ask for a lot. They embrace the simple life. I owe them so much. That's why I make an annual donation to the Retirement Fund for Religious. Do you remember the religious men and women who shaped your life? Say thank you to them by donating to the Retirement Fund for Religious at your local parish. 
Join me. Share in the care. Welcome back to our show. I'm talking with Pat Palumbo. Pat, uh, one of the things that I'd like you to explain is uh, the charitable gift annuity. What exactly does that mean and how does it play into this whole leaving a legacy? Uh, Father, a charitable gift annuity is a very popular tool that uh, many people are attracted to because it not only allows one to leave a legacy, but it also provides an income during lifetime. Uh, for example, uh, one can set up a charitable gift annuity, and to do so is very simple. It's a one-page agreement that I'm empowered by the diocese to sign with the donor. And uh, again, the minimum amount to set up a gift annuity is $10,000. And when you set up a charitable gift annuity, uh, we use actu actuarial uh, figures to come up with what the payout will be based upon your age and, and the current interest rates at the time. Uh, we have people with charitable gift annuities, for example, that are paying seven, eight uh, percent. I just did uh, one for a gentleman the other day who just turned 70 and his would pay about 5.6 percent. Again, much higher than what this gentleman would, would get putting that $10,000 in a treasury note or in a bank account. But we guarantee this payout for the rest of the person's life. So if you're going to get the 5 or 6% uh, at 70 years old for your gift annuity, you're going to get a check from the diocese every quarter for the rest of your life. At the time of your passing, whomever you named as the beneficiary in your gift annuity will get the residual of the gift annuity. So in that way, you've left a legacy once again to a Catholic school, Catholic charities, your parish. Uh, the gift annuities we have in the diocese, a majority of them are for parishes. People want to remember their parish and do something for their parish they probably couldn't do outright from their pocket, but down the road they could leave this legacy for the parish. We just had uh, uh, some significant uh, gifts made uh, thanks to the legacy that was set up uh, by a couple of gentlemen in our diocese. Uh, uh, in the case of St. Vincent de Paul Society, they received over $100,000 from a charitable gift annuity. And we've had other similar gifts like that uh, occur. So again, you could leave a legacy, but during your lifetime, you're earning income. Let's talk about uh, bequests. Uh, I know that in my experience over the years in parishes that every now and then you'll get uh, a letter from a lawyer saying, uh, you have been named as a beneficiary by so-and-so who has recently passed away. And it could be a, a parishioner from years gone by who may have moved out of the area years ago. Maybe someone who um, was maybe a widow, no children, uh, who had a special affinity for their parish. So th these bequests, when they come, are usually and always very well welcomed, mm -hmm. but um, how does one leave an actual uh, legacy as a bequest? Is that a common thing? It is a common thing and it's the easiest way to leave a legacy because most people are prudent enough to have a valid will. And in their will, of course, we always remember our loved ones, our family, our friends, etc. But we encourage people to think about um, their Catholic parish or the Catholic Church uh, as a residual gift in their will. So for example, uh, we say remember your family first, then remember as a residual gift your parish, Catholic school, Catholic charity, some other cause in our church in your will. And it's simply a matter of adding a codicil, as they call it, to one's will. You simply contact your attorney or, who, or whomever set up your will and simply say, I want to add uh, St. Mary Parish to my will or whatever mm -hmm. and um, and your attorney could just put that in and it's that simple. Let's also talk about life insurance policies. You know many people have a life insurance policy. Is it common to uh, have a life insurance policy where money would go to a diocese or to a parish? It, it, it is not as common as we would hope it would be, Father, mm -hmm. but uh, it is very possible to do that. 
uh, universities tend to market insurance policies much more than what the Catholic Church has done, but we're trying to promote it also. Uh, with life insurance, there uh, one of the ways you could, uh, you, if you have a paid up life insurance policy at home, you could simply donate that. Uh, but I think what you were alluding to was what many people have done is they actually uh, name the particular parish or school or whatever it is as the owner and beneficiary of a life insurance policy. They then pay the dividend or they then pay the premiums mm -hmm. on a regular basis. When doing it that way, the premiums could be deductible because you do not own that policy, nor are you or any member of your family a beneficiary of it. In that way, making small incremental payments of premium, you could leave a significant gift somewhere down the line. One of our Catholic schools in the diocese received a million dollars from one who over a number of years paid the premium, got a tax deduction for it, but when this person passed away, that school got a million dollars from the face value of that life insurance policy. So it's almost like a benefit to both parties. Exactly. Yeah. How does one go about, we're down to the last few minutes of our second segment, how does one actually go about setting this up with uh, an institution? Very briefly, what do they need to do to contact you or the diocese if they want to leave a legacy? Well, they should call me at the Diocese of Youngstown. Uh, it's 330-744-8451 and ask for me, Pat Palumbo and we could talk to you about any of these opportunities to leave a legacy. Uh, we have a website, uh, doigiving, D-O-Y-G-I-V-I-N-G dot com. And if you go to doigiving.com, you'll see a lot of these plans we're talking about today, Father, actually listed there in, in some details about each one. And even the Diocese of Youngstown uh, website itself, D-O-Y dot org, will get you information about these different gift plans. But if you contact us, we'd be glad to talk to you about these opportunities. We're gonna take a break uh, in about a minute. Uh, but before we do, I'd like you to, when we come back, have some ideas of what specifically we would like our everyday parishioner to think about when it comes to leaving a legacy. Because isn't that what we are all about, like handing on and passing over these important things and how do we perpetuate what we do as people of faith for this great institution that we call the church. So I'm gonna have you respond to that right when we come back. We're gonna take a quick break. Please stay with us. Doesn't your child deserve the best education possible? Then you should consider a Catholic school where strong academics are offered in a safe, disciplined environment, where education is deeply rooted in the religious teachings of our Catholic faith, where graduation rates are exceptional, where outstanding teachers help your child reach his or her fullest potential in the classroom and in life. But you should consider a Catholic school for the most important reason of all. Your child is worth it. There is a place where a total stranger will give you their blood. There is a place where someone you never knew will save your child from drowning. A place where people from seven states away will turn up at your door and give you food and shelter after a flood. There is a place where a person who doesn't look like you, talk like you, or dress like you will stretch out their hand and put it across your shoulders and say, everything is going to be okay. That place is called America, where we look out for each other, and it's up to us to keep it that way. When you help the American Red Cross, you help America. I'm talking with Pat Palumbo. Pat, we, we left our um, last segment with posing kind of a, a question. We know how important it is for us as, as Catholics and as Christians to pass on our faith and to ensure that, that this great gift that the Lord has given us continues. What can we do or what can people do who are with us uh, 
continue to hand on this great legacy, which is the church and which is the faith. And how can they do that um, spiritually, but, but through their own uh, gifts and resources? Well, first of all, I think many of our Catholic people don't realize that they can be philanthropists or they can leave a legacy through their church. I think we as a church have not been strong enough in emphasizing how you could further the faith and further your personal faith and conviction by leaving a legacy. But uh, I also wear the hat of the director of stewardship for the diocese, and stewardship itself implies an orderly disposition of one's worldly goods at the time of death. So a good steward would have a good estate plan in place. And as part of that estate plan, we would hope that as a dedicated, committed, faith-filled Catholic, you'd want to promote the faith beyond your lifetime and the sacraments of the church. So by leaving a legacy that empowers seminarians and, and the priests of our diocese and the priesthood, empowering uh, Catholic education, uh, serving God's poor, which we were challenged to do throughout many of the Gospels, um, you have these opportunities when you leave a legacy of, of furthering on your faith. You know, if I could just share with you, uh, uh, for the first time I had an opportunity to, to go to Italy this past uh, year and uh, visiting the, the various uh, sites and monuments and basilicas and all the beautiful scenes you see around Italy, uh, I was taken by how generations of families built these mm -hmm monuments, built these things, and I thought, you know, in our culture, we're so used to a beginning and end, uh, like a 30-minute TV program that it'll conclude, there'll be a re resolution at the end of 30 minutes, but over there, people actually knew they're committed to this cause, but it'll be generations bef beyond them that will ever see the result. Well, here, you have a way of impacting the future, just as our ancestors did, uh, way back in the history of our church, you have a, a way of touching the future when you leave a legacy. The one area that we really haven't uh, talked about is um, the one uh, phrase called matching gifts. Does that play in part uh, with leaving a legacy? And if it does, how so? Well, it, it can in, in, in light of the fact that a matching gift uh, relates to uh, one who is employed by a company or organization that has a matching gift program. We typically see this with our annual appeal, the annual bishop's appeal for the diocese, and many of our schools benefit from matching gifts uh, in that you can declare at your place of employment that I would like to have X amount uh, taken out of my pay as a contribution, uh, and I want to designate Catholic charities, for example, or the Catholic Diocese as the beneficiary of that. And then the, if you take out X amount of dollars per month, your employer will match that amount and give a like amount. I, I remember uh, several years ago when we were doing uh, the capital campaign for the diocese and uh, one of the areas was uh, a contribution uh, in kind, for example, maybe someone giving property or some expensive item that would be used um, to, that might be liquidated mm -hmm. to uh, go into some endowment. Has that been beneficial over the years or is that something we want to continue to uh, lift up as an option? It is an option, uh, Father Corda, but uh, it has to be something that truly is liquid because uh, again, the, the Catholic Diocese is not uh, a place that wants to amass property or material things. Uh, so if there is something that, that is liquid and can be easily sold uh, at value, we're very interested in talking with someone about that. Because I know uh, over the years, for example, I've uh, spoken with um, uh, the Sisters of Beatitude House and uh, how many of those homes and institutions that they minister in have been donated along the way. So, so there is that opportunity for any kind of um, charitable organization to receive something like that that would really continue a legacy. And I think that would be important for us to keep in mind, the folks that are with us, that there is something that they could do 
to further and to leave this legacy, not necessarily dollars in the bank. Right, exactly. There are properties like that. We have, uh, I work with a couple in Stark County who had a home that was uh, appreciating in value. It was a nice home. And what they did was they set up a life estate, as it's called, with their parish. And we worked on the language uh, for this with an attorney. And what a life estate does is it, it allowed them to live in the home as long as they were capable of living in the home. But at the time of their passing or when they moved out of the home, it would revert to the ownership of the parish. And again, it being a relatively easy to sell piece of real estate, it offered the parish uh, some income and some benefit. And it was a legacy. Exactly. L let's uh, conclude our last few minutes together by giving some additional information on how do people contact you or the diocese if they're interested in getting more information, but also participating in leaving a legacy. Yeah, I, I mentioned our phone number, 330-744-8451. That's the Catholic Diocese Chancery Offices. And just ask for me, Pat Palumbo. You could also email me at ppalumbo, that's P-P-A-L-O-M-B-O, at youngstowndiocese.org. You could go to our website, Doi Giving, and, and check us out there. You can even Google that. You'll, you'll find it comes up. It's the, right at the top uh, listing you'll get there. And you'll find more information there also. Just one brief comment of why it's important to leave a legacy. It's important to leave a legacy because you will make a mark and promote your faith long beyond your lifetime. You promote the sacraments of the church, the good that the church has done, and what the church has meant to you in your faith life beyond your lifetime. Pat Palumbo, thank you so much for being with us. My pleasure, Father Corder. Thank you for having me. And thank you for being with us. Have a good day, and God be with you. Spotlight has been a production of CTNY, the Catholic Television Network of Youngstown. Your program host was Father James Corda. Light Moments. Here's Father Tom McSweeney. Everyone makes mistakes, but not everyone owns up to them. We're sometimes afraid we'll lose the respect of others if we admit to being less than perfect. But according to the publication Leadership, admitting mistakes is a sign of strength, maturity, and fairness. It suggests that the next time you are tempted to deny responsibility for an error or you feel the urge to make excuses, stop. Seek some privacy and think through what happened and why. And remind yourself that nobody can be expected to be perfect. So the next time you fall short of perfection, be quick to admit your mistakes and slow when it comes to repeating them. And finally, be gentle with yourself. After all, you're only human. This message from the Christophers, New York, New York 10017.